In today's tutorial, let's do a simple flower pot cozy using Fentex yarn. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial we are going to do a simple flower pot cozy. Look at the beautiful colors and this is using Fentex slipper and craft yarn. This is also made by our friends at Yarnspirations and today I'm going to show you how to make this. Now in this particular pattern it allows you to customize to any kind of flower pot that we have and so I'm going to choose one of Diva Dan's pots here and I'm going to show you how we're gonna be able to cover it and follow the instructions in order to do so. So what is exactly Fentex? Let's talk about that next. So introducing Fentex Slipper and Craft Yarn and this is also made by our friends at Yarnspirations. What exactly is it? Well according to the instructions this is 100% all of fine Exelon and this is a really interesting kind of yarn just like you see here. Now the advantages to this type of yarn it is a slipper yarn so it will not stretch or shrink Okay, and it keeps the shape that you knit or crochet in and these colors are non-fading and will last you a very long time. Uh, they're meant for long time wearing so you'll probably have these for years and it's also stain resistant. So this kind of yarn is very perfect for these kind of things because if you get water uh, and especially if you use regular acrylic or wool on something like this then it's really gonna have a hard time. But because this is slippery yarn meant for wear and tear this is a perfect kind of yarn for this. So we're going to need one ball of Fentex yarn in order to cover a basic pot and what we're going to do is we're gonna go through some of these instructions here and we're gonna customize it as we go because you can see that it has a customization. So we're going to look for making the diameter the same diameter as the base of your particular pot and then we're gonna work our way upward just like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat the system today. I'm going to show you how to be able to do this without any uh, what is, what are those called? Those slip, <laughs> those slip stitches so you don't see any slip stitching going up in the work at all. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to then uh, get your base and show you how to back loop and then how to grow up. So let's grab our four and a half millimeter US 7 crochet hook today and our Fentex yarn and let's get started. Just as a disclaimer I'm going to tell you like when I started off this tutorial I got off to a really rough start. You could see that and I was struggling at a bit. Fentex is a little bit tough to get used to but once I got out of the camera and I just went upstairs and put my feet up I actually got some really great stitch work. One thing I did like about the Fentex is that I was learning how to use it in the bottom so you'll never see it but as I got to the edge then I realized how to be able to manipulate this yarn. It just is a matter of not being so tense with it and to make sure that you capture, capture all the fibers that are belonging to it. So you may struggle when you're using this yarn but that's quite natural. It is a different property than other types of yarn on the market but this is a great example. So um, this is just a stitch marker. We can pull it out but uh, this is a great example of you know applying some of your crochet work to things that you can have around your home such as this simple flower pot cozy. So let's get on with this tutorial. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. So let's just do that and there are slower tutorials and beginner tutorials on how to do things on our YouTube channel if you need that. So this kind of yarn is a little bit interesting to work with so you wanna keep it so it's a little bit tense so it does not open up. So if you have all these fibers open up on you it gets harder to get that hook through. So let's begin. We're going to chain four. So just yarn over and pull through one, two, three, and four. And what I'd also recommend at this point, do you see how my hook is not like a, a, a saw cut, it's more of a molded. These kind of hooks are easier to work with this yarn versus any kinds of ones that have a really really sharp edge. So let's uh, just insert our hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and then pull through and then we have our center ring of our flower pot cozy right at the bottom. Let's move along to round number one. So round number one I'm going to show you how to get started and we're gonna avoid the slip stitching even though it's asking us to do it and I'm going to start. So we're gonna chain one and I want you to put eight single crochets into this ring. So just going right into the ring and just count these out. So one and two and three and four and five and six, seven and eight. And what I want you to do, we're going to avoid the slip stitch. So wh what I want you to do is pull up a loop and grab some spare yarn just like this or a stitch marker and just insert your needle or your hook underneath that last stitch and just drag this through. 
okay and just leave it let it hang there. You know that this is the stopping and starting then of this particular round. So when we go to start up the next part of this we know every time we pass this point and we're gonna move it up every time we know that we've gone in one complete revolution. Now this uh, end is now hanging out so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim that just to get that out of the way. It's easier to show you how to work with this without tails uh, blocking any kind of view. Easy to cut but it's uh, not as easy when you wear these kind of things as far as like uh, catching on stuff. So um, let's begin in round number two. Now getting started on round number two is relatively simple but where do you start? Okay so what I want you to do is that you count backwards. So that count the first one that it's under. So one and count back to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so right where that eighth one is the first stitch of this round. So in this round we're going to put in two single crochets into every stitch. So I can either count at this point which I don't need to because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep rotating around until I get to my stitch marker once again. So what you wanna be very conscientious of what you're just witnessing me doing this now is that you just wanna be a little bit easy with this stuff. You don't wanna be too tense because it's gonna be harder. So you're going to put two single crochets into each one of these particular stitches. So getting used to Fentex is um, the first battle I guess you could say but you can't have everything right. Rome was never built in a day so if you want to use this kind of material you just gotta be a little bit patient with yourself, get used to it and then eventually it'll come to you naturally. If anything what's gonna happen is after you finish this kind of project you might be a little bit looser in your tension so on other projects like soon after this. So just uh, putting in two into each and I wanna show you what to do with that stitch marker once I get there and you can see that I'm not counting but there was a total of eight single crochets if you are counting and you're putting two into each. So here's the stitch marker so you're gonna put in two into this one and then the final one of the two, so the second one of the two, you are going to move that stitch marker up. So just inserting your hook underneath and just going underneath. Whoops and just pull it through. So you wanna pull it through so that it's showing under that last one. Okay. So let's begin round number three and I'm gonna show you the similarities now from all this way to the base of actually starting to go up to the side of the container. So we're going to move up to number three. So remember I am substituting. So the very next stitch that's available to you, it says that there's going to be two into the next. So we're avoiding that chain one because we're going in a continuous circle. So it's gonna be two into the next and then one into the next one after that. And that's the repeat pattern for round number three. Okay, so there's two and one. So there's one and I got two, okay. And now the next one is by itself. So there's one by itself. So you just wanna be a little bit patient with yourself and just continue to do it. So the next one is two into one and the next one is one into one. So here's the similarity. So every time you go into move up to a certain round that's just gonna change. So there'll be a two in the first one and then next time there's gonna be uh, two by themselves and then two into the next one and two by themselves. And then the row after that there will be two into the same one and then three by themselves. So that distance gets further and further of the ones that are staying together. So in this particular round it's two into one and then one by itself. Continue to do that all the way around to the stitch marker. So I'm coming up all the way around and I have two stitches left because you can see that that's two before the stitch marker. So the reason for telling you that is that the final one should be one by itself. So that I just put in two into that last one. So the final one will be one by itself. Why is it just one? And the reason for that is that the first one started off as two. So therefore this last one should just be one by itself. Just take it and just pull that stitch marker through the new section here. Okay and let's move up and I'm gonna show you again another revolution and show you how it's increasing because once you get that you can customize this for any size pot. So moving up to the uh, revolutions here we go. So we're going up number four. So there's gonna be two into the next one. So one and two and the next one, uh, two will be by themselves. So one into that one and moving to the next stitch there will be one into that one. Okay so the repeat pattern on this whole round is that there will be two into one so one and, and two and then the next two will be by themselves. 
Okay, so just continue to do that all the way around and that's around number four. So what I want to do is that I wanna continue in the same fashioning going all the way around so that I end up with a four inch diameter because that's the, the width of the diameter of my pot. Okay, so I wanna continue that to do that same thing going all the way around. So this one is two into one and then there will be a two by themselves. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I just put in two in this one. I still have two stitches left and those are the ones that'll be by themselves. So just watch that stitch marker when you're pulling it through. I don't ever use this yarn very often so it's a little bit of getting used to even for me, for myself. Um, I'd rather not put a tutorial online and say yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all really easy because it's just about adjusting yourself and I'd rather uh, you see me kind of struggle a little bit as I get used to it because I think that's just realistic when it comes to working with different yarn products. So as we move up, so round number five. So this time the first one will have two into the first one. So one and two and then the next three will be by themselves. So one, two, and three. So are you seeing the similarity? So I told you there will be like one by itself and then two and then the next round there's two by themselves and then two and now in this one there's three by themselves and then two. So you just have to keep it in that same fashion and going all the way around as we get bigger and bigger it just gets more and more um, stitches that stay by itself. So in this one there's three by themselves and then two into one. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around the final three will be by themselves before I hit that stitch marker once again. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue to grow your plant holder or your pot cozy to the size diameter that you need. In my case it's four inches using that same concept. So now that we did three by themselves the next one will be four by themselves and then two but we always st start off with the one in the, in the front of uh, being two by themselves and then this time there will be four. So one, two, three, and four. And please refer to the directions if I'm not being uh, clear enough for you on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grow this out to four inches because that's the base of that and then I'm gonna show you how to do that right turn on the base of it and then I'm gonna show you how to grow it up then uh, on the side of the pot. So it's actually really quite easy and let me show you how to do that. So get it to the size that you need and then join me back here. I'm gonna get mine to four inches and then I'll show you how to do the bend of the pot as it goes upward. Okay, so I've got my four inches now. It went a lot quicker than I expected it to go and now what we're going to do is that we're going to create the bend that's in the base of, of here. So we have um, just like you see here. So we have like the flat edge and then going all the way up. So what we want to do is we wanna create that. So we're not gonna do a slip knot or a slip stitching, any type of things like that. We have it marked where your stitch marker is and so in stitches if you're new to crochet is that there's always two loops. Together they make up one stitch but the front uh, string is called the front loop and the back string is called the back loop. So if I go only into the back loop, so I kind of dive up over top and only go into the back loop and single crochet, that's called the, the back loop single crochet. Okay, so I want to go uh, in single crochet with the back loop all the way around. So I'm not gonna add any more additional stitches. I'm just going to put one single crochet into every back loop going all the way around. Please do that for the entire duration all the way into the stitch marker once again. So in the final stitch you're just going to put one back loop uh, single crochet. So now here's the thing is that we now have the base of your pot. Okay, so here it is here. Let me grab my pot. There it is. Okay, so now all I just need to do is go in a continuous circle all the way around. There's no magic dimensions to this. You can just continue to go around and around. So just starting in the next stitch, you do not need to carry this stitch marker up anymore. You're just gonna go in continuous circles all the way until you get to the top of your pot. So just uh, have to take your pot and just uh, kind of measure it out. Now because you did the back loops only in this time, this is going to have a natural bend that's gonna go upward and because you've done that it's going to fit that pot quite nicely. So you just have to go in around in a complete circle and go as many circles as you need to go in order to get the height and uh, you're going to see it starting to bowl up and then eventually you'll see the container um, forming within the yarn itself as you go all the way around. So when I come back I'll have the rest of this particular project done and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see I'm almost done my sample. I just slid in 
my pot inside and it fits like a glove it really does. So one thing I did notice about this project is that I got off to a really rough start as I tried to learn how to use Fentex but once I got past this and I kicked up and just relaxed because it's not always easy to teach in front of people especially here on camera is that once I kicked back and relaxed I actually got great stitch work as I did. So once we've been going around in a complete circle so what I want to do at the very end is that I want to just finish this off and so I just gonna immediately just stop and I'm going to slip stitch into three stitches. So one, two, and three. Just like that. Okay and so I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut my yarn like this and I'm just gonna pull this through like this. So this stuff is really quite uh, um, it will lock nicely into position. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just gonna weave in the final right into the very top and for people that don't like to see stopping and starting you can just turn this around so nobody can really see that you've done that. So now that it's in I can just simply tr trim my work just like this and uh, this turned out pretty good. So I'm um, really quite happy with it. If I want to change out the pot just slide it out. You can see it keeps its shape nicely and if you want to just change out the pot you can just do it like that. Nice and simple. Okay so this is how you do a simple flower pot cozy. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy!